Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Art Center's new series, Art Explorer, where each week we'll go to a different part of the world and learn how to draw the animals that live there. Today we're taking to the skies and we're learning how to draw birds. I took the liberty to bring a couple feathers in to show you. These are from a gold and blue macaw, which is a really big parrot. Her name is Nina. You can see they're blue on one side and we flip them, they're gold on the other. You know, birds bring all kinds of beautiful things to our life. Not only are they great to look at in the sky with the bright colors, but they fill the air with the sound of their songs. They eat insects. And did you know that the dinosaurs kind of eventually ended up being birds? That's where the word raptor comes from when we talk about birds of prey. I brought in some pictures of birds for you to look at. That orange bird on top there that's an oriole, and sometimes they have bright yellow on them as well. So they're a very bright bird, and they are local to Los Angeles. That's why I have them coming to my yard. Notice the shapes of these birds as we go down. They're kind of oval body with a round head. This is a cardinal, and it's a bright red bird, but we don't have them here. They're back east um, and in Florida. People I know see them there. I have no idea what kind of bird this is, but it is gorgeous. You can see it has all these colors on it. And that's the one thing about birds is that they, they come in this huge array of colors. Look at our blue friend here. Now look at that beak. A bird's beak is specifically designed for what kind of food they eat. So long beaks are different than short beaks depending on what they're going to be eating. If you're a seed-eating bird, you'll have a shorter beak. If you have a long beak like that, you're a nectar bird, chances are. And then we have two pictures of how we can draw birds to be flying. So you can tell the wings on our bird, they kind of got like an elbow in them. And I'm going to show you how we can draw those birds that look like they're flying. So let's take a look at what we're going to be making today. But today, because it's about birds and height, we're going to go vertical. So our paper now is vertical, otherwise known as portrait. Let's take a look at some of the things we have here. I want you to notice my horizon line. Remember how I'm always talking to you about how important that horizon line is? And then I have this way in the foreground, this branch with all the birds. It's really up close. And I want you to notice too how my bushes, those bushes get smaller as they get farther away from us. This helps give us the illusion of space, perspective. So the bushes that are close to us are big, the bushes that are farther away are small. And you can see on my branches, remember branches are like our body, so as the branch travels away from the trunk, they get smaller and skinnier as it travels away. Now, I drew a bird flying here, and I also drew a couple birds hanging out there. And I know it may seem complicated to draw a bird, but I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step of how to draw some birds. We're going to start with a flying bird. And when I break it down this way, I'm hoping you guys will see that everything is this easy to draw if you just look for shapes. Let's start. It's an oval, but you have to draw your oval so it's kind of pointed up a little bit. See how it leans up like that? After you draw your oval, you're going to draw the round head. And it's kind of, you can see where it goes. Now, after we have our oval in our head, look. These are like upside down V's because this is the bird's elbow. So you draw your two like mountains coming off of the side of the bird, right? All right, now that we're coming down here, we're going to add the tail feathers. That's just a triangle. It's as simple as that, a triangle. Moving over to our next one here, our last one. You can see we've kind of smoothed things out. So I've taken my line and I've joined the oval to the circle. I joined it. I put my beak on. I put the bottom rows of feathers off of my mountains. And I just threw some feathers over here for his tail feathers. Added a beak and an eye. So by starting with an oval and a circle, we wind up with a bird who's flying. Let's take a look at what a bird would look like if it's setting down. Again, because the structure of birds is so, so common between most birds. We're again, we're starting off with an oval. Then we add our circle for the head. We add our triangle for the tail of the bird. Now we're going to smooth it out a little bit. You see how I've joined the head and the neck by the body and the head by giving the neck? Put a beak on, threw some feathers in there, and then that's all that's left to do is give his wing 
comes this way, and then those are the feathers that go that way. Birds do have a little meaty, you guys have had chicken legs, right? Or like, you know, that, that you get from a store. So birds do have a meaty little leg there. Don't forget to give them a meaty little leg. It does turn into a skinny little leg afterwards, but the top part of it is like your thigh. So that's how you can easily draw birds. Let's try and draw our drawing today, shall we? Here's our paper. Here's my pencil and my eraser. Now, you guys remember, I'm always saying draw your horizon line first. I'm just gonna draw a straight horizon line that goes not too high, not too low. Here we go. I'm gonna draw lightly because I'm going to be drawing my house over it. So here, I'm gonna put in my house. I'm not gonna get fancy with my house. I'm only showing one side of my house, like we're straight looking at it. Here's my roof line. And do you see this? This is called an eave that will make your house look much more realistic. I'm gonna give them a door, throw in our windows. And then windows don't have to be square. Think about mixing up your windows. You know, they come in all kinds of shapes now. All right, now we got a pathway that's going to be coming toward me. So you know what that means? It gets bigger as it comes to me. Look, small, because far away, big, because it's close. I'm gonna give us little bushes. Let's get in here so I can get some control over my pencil. And I'm just making bumpy circles, really. But they look like a bush. That's really what a bush is, just a big bumpy circle. We can throw some flowers in there. But look how my bushes are getting bigger. And I can even run that one off. All right, now I'm just gonna put my little sun in. And I have a bird bath hanging out here too, don't I? So when you do a bird bath, I'm gonna start with an oval. And then I'm gonna make a smile that goes under my oval. So it's an oval with a smile. And I'm gonna give it the little legs it stands on. And then I just have to show the water inside. So that's a frown. This that I'm coloring in, this is the water inside of our bird bath. If you wanted to, you can put a bird on your bird bath. All right, now here come the part I think that you guys might think is hard, but it's not. We're gonna do the tree branches. I'm gonna come in from the side, and I'm just gonna let my pencil find its own way. Any tree branch will do. I'm gonna start, and I'll notice it's fat here, and as I go in, I'm gonna split off for a second branch. And I'm gonna come in here, and look, I'm getting fatter as it gets down there, and then it gets skinnier. There you go. Looks like a tree branch, huh? If I wanted to, I could add another branch coming off this way and ending there. And then, of course, I'm just going to put my leaves on. And, you know, you don't have to fill it all up with leaves. Maybe it's the springtime. Maybe the leaves are just coming back. But you can see my leaf is the shape of an almond or your eyeball. Now I'm going to draw me some birds, okay? Let's start with our first bird. Remember what I said. Oval. Circle for the head. Mountain one. Mountain two. Triangle for the tail feathers. That's basically what we started with, with the drawing, remember? Okay, so now I'm going to just put in my feathers. Put in my feathers. Smooth out his head. Put in his beak. Give him an eyeball. And turn this into feathers. If I want, I can give him a couple legs that are kind of going back in the wind. Now, for bird number one. Again, an oval, a head, and now I'm going to smooth out his head, give him his little beak here, smooth out his head, give him his tail feathers, and now his legs, his wing is about here, it's going to go a little bit beyond his body, and his little leg is here with his claws hanging onto the tree, there's his eyeball. So. I guess I could do one more bird on this branch for you guys. So I'm going to draw a bird that's just looking straight up into the sky. So here's his oval body. There's his round head. I'm going to put his beak here because he's looking up. Maybe he's looking for his mom. I'm going to put one wing here. I'm going to put another wing here. And I'm going to give him his tail feathers and smooth out his body. Presto! There you go. Here's our line drawing. Now. As with all things, especially with birds, color makes everything a tad better. So, if you're one of those kids that's super lucky and you got some watercolors and you got some oil pastels or crayons, 
this is what you could make, or something like this. Now remember, I want you to use your imaginations. This is like a jumping off point. There are birds like the phoenix. The phoenix is the bird that rises from the ashes. So there's all kinds of birds that can come out of our imaginations too. So when you're making your birds, there's no real limit on what kind of bird. It can be any kind of fanciful bird you like. But you can see I use the oil pastel to give my birds the texture of wings. I use my oil pastel to make my path look more like bricks. And I outlined my wings, and you can see on my blue bird, I added some white oil pastel so that it looked like the texture of the feathers. Well, I know I flew in and my arms are tired. I hope you enjoyed our little lesson on how to draw birds today. Remember, if you make any of these artwork and you want to share it with us, please, you could message it on Facebook and we'll be posting it on Instagram. We'd love to see what you guys are doing. Thanks for joining us and the Canoga Park Youth Art Center. We'll see you again soon.